Metropolis Street Racer, or MSR for the acronym connoisseurs out there, was a Dreamcast exclusive street racing game developed by the British based team at Bizarre Creations and published by Mega. in Europe in November 2000. The North American release was a few months later in January 2001, and although work had started on a Japanese version, it was never actually released. After spending the late 90s developing Formula 1 games for the PlayStation, Bizarre were approached by Sega with the opportunity to make a street racing game for the upcoming Dreamcast, and while it was originally meant to be a launch title, it suffered several delays before it could finally be released. The rush development of MSR is well documented, and upon its initial release in Europe the game still had a number of major bugs. Sega were quick to recall these discs and replace the unsold copies and any replacements needed with a much more polished replacement, although there still remains a few minor bugs. Races take place across more than 250 courses in the cities of London, Tokyo and San Francisco, and the game used a realistic day and night cycle that was based on the Dreamcast's internal clock, so if you lived in England and were racing at 9am, the races in Tokyo would take place at 6pm. It was a clever idea that I remember being in love with at the time, and it felt entirely new. Another entirely new thing was the fact that MSR was the first racing game to have radio stations and DJs talking between songs. Each city had three exclusive radio stations that played music appropriate to its location. Yeah. A lot of the gameplay in MSR comes as much from driving stylishly as it does from winning races. You're rewarded with kudos points for successful drifts and slides, and it's up to you to decide how much to risk on each corner, whether you want to keep on the race in line and hold on to first place, or risk a slide in order to rack up more kudos points. There are 25 chapters in total with 10 races in each chapter. Successfully completing all 10 races will unlock a new car in the showroom and completing a quick time lap challenge with this car unlocks it for you to use in any of the races. However, in order to unlock the next chapter, you must hit a certain number of kudos points, and this is where the first of my complaints against the game comes in. You can win every race, earn a nice amount of kudos points on each of them, and set a new lap record on every course in the chapter, and still not unlock the next chapter if you haven't hit the pre-required amount of kudos points. And this caused no end of frustration to my younger self, who just wanted to keep unlocking new things. I get that the game was trying something new, and making it too easy would have made the entire kudos system pointless, but there are times when you have to replay entire races multiple times just to make up the 10 or so kudos points you were missing in order to progress and if you retry your race and fail, you lose all of your previously earned kudos points and get a minus 25 point penalty for that race, effectively forcing you to have to redo it again anyway, and if you abandon the race midway through, you get a minus 50 point penalty. MSR doesn't mess around. But while it can be frustrating at times, the gameplay in MSR still holds up today. Bizarre created a handler model that still feels fun and responsive 17 years later, and the difficulty level is never too hard. Having the next card to unlock hidden under a sheet at the start of each chapter pushed me to get good and rack up more and more kudos points, and once you hit the MSR zone of knowing exactly how far you can push your car, the points will come flooding in. Races fall into one of five categories. Hot lap, where you simply have to beat the target lap time, one-on-one -on -one races, where you race against one opponent, street races, where you race against multiple opponents, championships, which are a series of street races, and challenges, which have a custom set of rules such as overtaking a certain number of cars within a time limit. Having multiple objectives within each chapter keeps the game feeling fun as you progress, and you never really know what the game will throw at you next. The only other major complaint I have with Metropolis Street Racer is with the sound. While the music is generally quite good throughout, the car sounds are flat and lifeless to an almost distracting degree. If you play with the music turned on, it's harder to notice, but turn off the music and play an entire race listening to the droning sound of the engines 
and it gets tiring pretty fast. In Metropolis Street Racer, Bazaar created a fun and engaging racing game that truly stands the test of time. The graphics are still good and the gameplay is every bit as fun today as it was when it was released back in 2000. It's just a shame it was released towards the end of the Dreamcast's life. Selling only 120,000 copies, it was considered a failure at the time. However, its influence can be seen in its Xbox exclusive spiritual successor Project Gotham Racing where the kudos system was further refined and the arcade style street racing almost perfected. And while Gotham may have been a better game, the chances are it wouldn't have existed at all without Metropolis Street Racer.